So I've come up with a game of curse or cobblers. <laughs> Superstitions, they're a bother Are they made up or are they proper? Curse or cobblers, curse or cobblers Curse or cobblers, curse or cobblers So I've got five curses Five famous curses. I'm going to read you a story about them, and you've got to tell me whether it's curse or cobblers. Okay. Whether it's true or well, not, whether it's true, but whether it's a true yeah, story true. that people believe it's a curse or not. Okay. What if I believe all of them? If well, I believe all of them, <laughs> that doesn't then... make a... no. <laughs> well, you can believe what you want. But <laughs> people don't believe all of these. Some of them are, are fake. Let's go with the first one. The first one is The Curse of the Chairman Scorned. In July 1932, Bayern Munich chairman Heinrich Mutterlecker was unceremoniously turfed out of the club amid accusations of money laundering and fraud. Mutterlecker naturally felt aggrieved and sought the services of a gypsy priestess who cursed the team to never again win whilst Mutterlecker held the grudge. League champions that year for the first time in their 30-year history. Munich were confident of success the next year, but fell disappointingly short of their previous season's success. Despite multiple attempts at reparations with their disgruntled former owner, he never forgave them, and they continued to languish in the league until Mutterlecker's death in 1967. The next year, Bayern Munich started a run of 27 titles in the next 50 years. Is that curse or cobblers? Sounds like it could be true. Mm. Um, I like to think Germany, they, they have a lot of like fairy tales and things they in Germany. They do, sort of Grimm's, Grimm's yeah. fairy tale stuff, yeah. So I, I could see even a, a like CEO yeah. going to a... Sort of believing in the, in the yeah. power of gypsy priestesses, yeah. It's not... <laughs> Is being turfed out for financial fraud mm. doesn't really play into that whole romantic. Well, or, or <laughs> I mean, there has to be a real reason why you got rid of. <laughs> um, but that could easily have been changed throughout, like yeah, that's, seventy yeah. years. They could yeah. have just changed that to make it sound a bit more impressive. That's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds like it could be true. Nineteen thirty-two. Did you say? Nineteen July nineteen thirty-two. That's when he was left. They won the league in 1931-32 for the first time. But then didn't win it again until 60. Did not win it again until 1968 because uh, he died in 67. And then they won 27 titles in the next 50 years, including this season. They've been become the most successful team in Germany. I'm going to say true. You think that's Success true? Success has to start somewhere. The it... curse of the chairman scorned is completely false. <laughs> ah. I fully made it up. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. True facts in there, though. It's like Munich did win their first one in 1930-31 and have won 27 titles in the 50 years after that. But no, I just made it up. It's good, though. Yeah, not it's bad. Good story. It? Yeah, that's, uh, I feel really good. I like writing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. This is about the curse of Billy Penn. Real estate entrepreneur William Billy Penn was credited for Philadelphia's founding in the mid-17th century. In 1894, Philadelphians built a statue atop City Hall in order to honour Billy. The monument remained the highest point and the tallest building in Philadelphia for quite some time until the 1987 construction of One Liberty Place's skyscraper. Since then, the Flyers have lost in the Stanley Cup in 1987 and 1997, the Phillies lost the 1993 World Series and the 76ers lost the 2001 NBA Finals. The Eagles also lost the NFC Championship three years in a row and then won, uh, lost the Super Bowl in 2004 as well. Finally, the curse was lifted when a figure of pen, a four-inch figure of pen, was placed in the eaves of the newly built Comcast Centre, the new tallest building in Philadelphia. 
The year after this, the Phillies won the 2008 World Series and the first Pro Sports title in the city since 1983. The Eagles also won the 2018 Super Bowl, the first in their history, proving that the curse was well and truly lifted. Is that curse or cobblers? Oh, I've been to Philadelphia. You have. It's in the Rocky Steps, haven't you? I have. Mm. And I imagine, actually, where the Rocky Steps, they're Town Hall Steps, right? The Rocky Steps. Yeah. I imagine the original statue of Billy Penn is there mm. it's on Town Hall. Didn't do like a walking tour or anything in mm. Philadelphia. That would be Didn't really useful. Didn't see any sports useful. games either, did you there? No. Sort of. I do remember them being fairly good at losing. They are in all different sports. They are well <laughs> known for being cursed, effectively, <laughs> since since this time, since the eighties. They used to be really good mm. in the six, like they had uh, Doctor J and uh, Will Chamberlain play for them a little bit. So in the basketball, they won a lot. Prior to that, the Phillies, I think, are quite good in baseball as well. And the Flyers, the uh, NHL team, they were good as well. Prior they to good this. sandwich too. Mm. The old, uh, what's that Philly called? Philly steak. Yeah, the Philly cheese steak. I never tried one of them. Really good. They look really, really yeah. good. They look so, like, sickly, though. They are super greasy. And yeah. it's, like, American cheese. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, it is. I might have to go get one after this. Really good ice cream as well. Really? Yeah. Mm. Feel it like Philadelphia brand ice cream. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Who knew? And the cheese. Yep. Soft cheese. Uh, and, and some steak. <laughs> Put it all together. <laughs> Eat it one big scoop. <laughs> I think I went to the Comcast Centre as well. Mm. Don't remember it being that tall. No? No. I saw the Liberty Bell. Did you? Yeah. Did you crack it? More. Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, why not? You think William Billy Penn, you think he put a curse on the, the city yep. for being too low. You'd be right. <laughs> that is a true story. That's yeah. That is the real reason why they think they lost so many games. And apparently, when they built the Comcast Center, the guys who put the roof on had just had this little like four inch statue, yeah, and just put it there. And then they sort of extended the building and made it taller. And they made a tinier statue and put that there as well. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> so want to risk yeah, they do, moving. They are incre like as a lot of sports fans are incredibly superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> and you would be, wouldn't you, <laughs> if you'd been cursed yeah. for twenty five years? Yeah, so that is a true curse or a true believed curse anyway. Okay, question three. The curse of the Billy Goat. William Cianis was much like any other Cubs fan during game four of the 1945 World Series, except they bought his pet goat, Murphy. Permitted to attend the match, Murphy was his normal goat self, but it turned out that he reeked so much that fans began to complain and eventually, Sianis was asked to leave Wrigley Field altogether and to bring Murphy with him. As he exited the ballpark, an insulted Sianis proclaimed, Them Cubs, they ain't gonna win no more! The Cubs went on to lose the Game 4 and the rest of the series to Detroit Tigers, and it didn't end there. The Chicago Cubs didn't even make it to the World Series again until 2016, and that year they broke the longest American sports championship drought of 108 years. <laughs> is that curse or cobblers? This is this happened at Wrigley Field, did yep. you say? In Chicago. Chicago. Chicago Cubs. I have heard of curses around the Cubs, but have you? I don't I don't remember a goat being involved. <laughs> <laughs> and you think you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, people really like their goats. In 1945, especially, just after the end of the war. If I had a goat, goats. I'd take it with me everywhere. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, they they seem like they'd enjoy baseball. They're just fun people. Have you ever seen that YouTube channel, Gary the Goat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we watched that together. Gary. <laughs> yeah, you're going, Gary. <laughs> he just goes down slides. <laughs> He's like jumping around on top of the car. <laughs> He's great. Shitting everywhere. Yeah. He's a bit of a pain, but he's great. So when when was he asked to leave? How long How long had, had he been taking his goat there? Before? I don't know that. Uh, I know he took his goat to this game. I don't know how many games before that he was allowed to take him to. 
Maybe mm. like maybe it was like to all of them, and then just this one day, it was a smelly goat. Or <laughs> people were just getting more and more annoyed. Yeah, and eventually the they were like, "Yeah, get out." Um, that would make sense, and because it's a World Series, it's going to be packed, isn't it? Yeah, the stadium's going to be close. Maybe up until then, he'd gone to all the games. Yeah, and like regular busy. season games. Yeah. yeah, no one goes to them, do they? Because there's forty hundred of them. Yeah, exactly. Every single minute, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it's true. You think that one's true? William Cianis, the curse of the Billy Goat. That is true. <laughs> That's a real one. Yes. William Cianis put a curse on the club and they didn't win for 108 years. Not wow. not 108 years after that, though. They just had a, a run of 108 years without an American Sports Championship, which has now been broken, apparently. There's a new team that have gone more than that. I can't remember what they're called. They begin with an A. Somebody with right their in. pet gazelle. <laughs> pet chihuahua. <laughs> uh, it's a very smelly chihuahua. <laughs> okay, question four. There's only five, so we're nearly there. <laughs> question four. The finish line curse. Finn Heidi Hurdalipanen <laughs> <laughs> was a prominent 1500 meters runner in the 1920s and through the 1930s. Her trademark was a huge mass of Scandinavian blonde hair, the sight of which, flying ahead of a competitor, was enough to de- resign them to defeat in itself. In the 1936 Olympics, towards the later stages of her career, Hurulipanen stumbled on the back straight under close pressure from her closest rival, up-and-coming Swede, Dina Carlson, and fell, leaving Carlson to take the gold. Upon reaching the finish line, well out of the medals, Hurulipanen went to congratulate her rival, but noticed a chunk of blonde hair in the victorious Swede's hand. Enraged, Hurulipanen invoked the Norse gods to put a barrier at all finish lines that Carlson could never cross. In her next race, Carlson pulled up on her first lap with a hamstring injury. Her career was blighted with injury afterwards, and she never finished another competitive race. Her Hurlipanen retired soon after, but it was well known in the sport that she and Carlson never spoke again. Is that curse or cobblers? That seems like a really harsh curse, because even if she doesn't win, to not finish... To not cross the finish line suggests mm. some sort of injury or some or something like yeah. Uh, so that's pretty serious. That's uh, it's pretty harsh. But yeah. she did rip her hair out <laughs> and pull her over. True. And in that split second, mm. plus assuming you know how to summon the Norse gods, uh, she's Finnish. They obviously do. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're ever angry at somebody, <laughs> just say this spell. Say this spell and Thor will come down. <laughs> They're mm. also Finns and Swedes. Traditionally do not like each other. True. They're very antagonistic. Can any Swedish person just summon the Norse gods? Don't see why not. Is that allowed? Don't know. Depends if they believe in them, I suppose. It seems a bit harsh. And like, if if you summon them for something more petty mm. like you've just been overtaken fair and square yeah would that would they still come down who knows the gods particularly the old gods are very capricious weren't they yeah they would see something like this and be like mm, yeah that is a bit naughty i'm gonna i'm gonna mess with this and that yeah particularly like greek gods they used to love messing with humans it's yeah their favorite thing i don't think norse gods did so much though to be honest they tend to be just like fighting all the time don't they yeah Go to Valhalla, drink a load of mead. <laughs> <laughs> so I might just get drunk and just... Maybe that's what happened to curse him. <laughs> just got her drunk all the time. Um, I'm going to say cobblers. You think that's cobblers? Yeah. I've made up Heidi Hurulipan. Yes. You're right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Heidi Hurulipan is completely false. <laughs> I fully made her up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you said the name again. Yeah, it's not bad though. It does sound relatively Finnish. It does, yeah. I might. She might be the new character in my newest novel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got one more, and it's called the. Oh, how many have you got right so far? I've got that one. You got the Philly one right. You got the Billy Goat one right. Yep. Did you get the Philly one right? 
Yeah, I got the Philly one right. I got yeah, the first one did. wrong. Yeah, so you got three out of four so far. Yeah. That's good. Got to get this one to get four out of five. It is called The Curse of the Goalie in Green. Few people look good in green, and it seems that few people succeed in it either. It was noticed in the 2006 Football World Cup that all of the teams with green in their kit had gone out in the group stage. This excited the investigative spirit of statistician Albert Hillblower. He published a paper two years later which decreed that although outfield players wearing green had won the World Cup, no team with a goalkeeper wearing green had. Further to this, Hillblower had sought to investigate the trend across other sports with goalkeepers. It turned out that no international team had won its World Cup or equivalent with a goalkeeper in a green jersey. The closest that Hillblower could find was the Irish women's hockey team, who'd won the World Cup with a goalkeeper with green pads, but a yellow jersey. The trend was born out of the 2018 World Cup, Football World Cup, in which the green-shirted Daniel Subasic let in four goals in the final, whilst the yellow-shirted Hugo Lloris went on to lift the trophy. Is that curse or cobblers? Mm, maybe it's just science. Yeah, maybe. The green, the green makes you play worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's or... possible. Like, they do say that colours like, affect your mood, don't they? Yeah. Red is supposed to make you angry. Maybe green makes you shit. Team, teams. <laughs> <laughs> not literally. Not, not physically. <laughs> teams in red are meant to win more. Like, yeah, I have heard that. And uh, they looked at... That there's that one game where United changed their grey kit at half time. Ah. Because they said they couldn't see each other very well. Yeah. And so somebody did a study and showed that Yes, grey does not show up as well against green as other colours. Mm. I mean, they're not blind. They could still see them. But <laughs> yeah, they, they could sort of see but not out of the corner of their eye or whatever. And I've always thought the green's a weird colour for the kids yeah. anyway because it's the same as the grass. They, that's the reason why a lot of teams don't wear green socks, isn't it? Because you can't see, uh, again, out of the corner of your eye, you can't see people's green socks to pass to if you're not looking up. And also the referee can't see when they're being kicked. That's true, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah. kicking me? Maybe that's What's me? Maybe the keepers in green are just getting kicked all, all the time. day long. <laughs> no, he's just kicking the grass. No, <laughs> yeah. I can't penalise him for that. <laughs> the referee bleed, the goalkeeper bleeding in the goal line. <laughs> At least it'd be red then. No, that's true. Smart. <laughs> Don't die the kick with your own blood. <laughs> Good advice, Ben. Um, oh, hard to believe that no sport. With a goalkeeper has had a goalkeeper wearing green win the World Cup though. Mm. But it's one of those sort of things, isn't it? Might just you yeah, wouldn't, you wouldn't many, think about it, would you? Not many teams wear green. So. No, and a lot of goalkeepers do wear sort of yellow, don't they? Yeah. So I'm gonna say false. You think that's false? Yeah. You think that Albert Hillblow is a liar? I do. You're correct. <laughs> He's also fake. <laughs> I thought Hillblow was a really funny name. <laughs> oh, you know Mutterlecker who I made up in the first one? Yeah. His name means Motherlecker. Nah. <laughs> you did well. Four out of five. Nice. You know cobblers when you see them. <laughs> curse or cobblers. Curse or cobblers.